Hi guys! Today we're going to look at how to have the current scene fade to black before the next scene fades in. We'll be adding this to the 2D top-down shooter series we've been building. You can download this project and all the others in the series by supporting us on Patreon. All the links you need can be found in the description. OK, we'll start by navigating to the Scenes folder in the project panel and double-clicking the main menu to open it. To create the scene fade, we're going to stretch an image over the whole screen that we can then fade in and out. We'll click the plus button on the hierarchy and add an empty game object. We'll name this Scene Controller. Then we'll add a child canvas to this object by right-clicking it and selecting UI Canvas. Next we'll add the scene fade image. We'll right click the canvas and select UI image. We'll name this scene fade. Then we'll click this button to position the image. We'll hold down the Alt and Shift keys and select the bottom right option. This will stretch the image out over the whole screen. At the moment we can still see the menu over the image. To fix this, we'll select the canvas in the hierarchy. Then we'll set the sort order to 99. This is saying that we want this canvas to be drawn after everything that has a sort order lower than 99. As everything else has a lower sort order, the scene is now completely hidden. Next, we'll change the colour of the image. We'll select it in the hierarchy. Then we'll go to the inspector and change the colour to black. If we slide the alpha value back and forth, we can see how the scene fade is going to work. We'll leave this at zero so that we can still see the scene. Next, we'll create a script to control this. We'll navigate to the scripts folder in the project panel. Then we'll click the plus button and add a new script. We'll name this scene fade. We'll drag this onto the image in the hierarchy to assign it. Then we'll double click to open it in the editor. We'll start by removing the default methods. In this script, we want to be able to control the colour of the scene fade image. To do this, we need to add the Unity Engine UI namespace at the top. We'll add a private field to hold a reference to the scene fade image. Then we'll add the awake method. In here, we'll get the image component and assign it to the field. Next, we'll create a private coroutine to change the colour of the image over multiple frames. For the method to be executed as a coroutine, it needs to return I enumerator. If you want more information on coroutines, then take a look at our dedicated video on this. We'll add parameters for the start and target colours. and we'll add a float parameter for the duration to change from one to the other. Inside the method, we'll create a variable for the elapsed time. We'll initialise this to zero. We'll also create a variable for the elapsed percentage. We'll initialise this to zero as well. We want to keep changing the colour every frame until the duration is complete. To do this, we'll create a while loop that loops as long as the elapsed percentage is less than 1. Inside the loop, we'll calculate the percentage by dividing the elapsed time by the duration. Then we'll update the colour of the fade image. We'll use Colour Lerp to do this. We'll pass in the start colour, the target colour and the percentage.
then we need to make the coroutine wait until the next frame. We can do this by writing yield return null. After we've waited for the next frame, we'll increase the elapsed time by time.delta time. So this coroutine will now change the colour of the scene fade image from the start colour to the target colour over the specified duration. The next thing we'll do is add a couple of public coroutines to use this one to fade the scene in and out. We'll call the first one fade in coroutine. This will take a parameter for the duration. To fade in, we want the alpha value of the image to go from 1 to 0. We'll create a variable for the start colour. We'll use the existing red, green and blue values of the image. Then we'll set the alpha value to 1. We'll then do the same for the target colour. This time we'll set the alpha value to 0. Now we can call the original coroutine passing in these values. To call a coroutine from another one we need to write yield return. This will make the image covering the scene fade away, making the scene appear to fade in. Once this is done, we'll deactivate the scene fade game object as it's not needed again until the scene needs to fade out. Next, we'll create a similar method for fading out the scene. This time we want the alpha value to go from 0 to 1 to hide the scene. Before we call the other coroutine, we need to reactivate the game object. Then we'll call the other coroutine to make the scene fade image become visible. OK, that's it for this script. Let's save it and switch back to Unity. The next thing we need to do is make use of the scene fade script when changing scenes. For this we'll go to the project panel and add a new script. We'll name this scene controller. We'll drag this onto the scene controller object in the hierarchy to assign it. Then we'll double click to open it in the editor. We'll start by deleting the default methods. We'll add a serializable float field for the duration of the scene fade. Then we'll add a private field to hold a reference to the scene fade component. We'll initialize this in the awake method. As we assign the scene fade script to a child object, we'll use the get component in children method to get the reference. Next, we want to fade in the scene when it first starts. We'll do this in the start method. We can make the start method run as a coroutine by changing the return type to iEnumerator.
Now we can call the fade-in coroutine of the scene fade component. We need to remember to add yield return to call a coroutine. We'll pass in the duration of the scene fade. So this will fade the scene in when it starts. Let's save the script and switch back to Unity to try it out. We'll select the scene controller in the hierarchy and set the scene fade duration to 1 second. Then we'll press play. The scene now fades in. If we select play from the menu though, it doesn't fade out. Let's stop the game and go back to the script to fix this. We'll create a private coroutine called load scene coroutine. This will take a parameter for the name of the scene we want to load. The first thing we'll do in here is call the fade out coroutine on the scene fade component. Once the scene has finished fading out, we'll load the next scene. To do this, we'll need to add the Unity Engine Scene Management namespace at the top. Then to load a scene inside a coroutine, we'll use the Scene Manager Load Scene Async method. We'll do Yield Return to wait until the scene has finished loading and we'll pass in the name of the scene we want to load. Next, we'll add a public method that we can use to change scenes. This will take the name of the scene as a parameter. In here, we'll start the load scene coroutine. That's everything we need for this script. Let's save it and then switch to the main menu script to make use of it. We'll add a serializable field for the scene controller. Then in the play method, we'll replace the load scene call with a call to the scene controller. OK, that's all the changes we need. Let's save this and switch back to Unity. We'll select the main menu panel in the hierarchy. Then we'll drag the scene controller into the field in the inspector. Let's press play to try this out. Now when we select play from the main menu, the current scene fades out but the game scene doesn't fade in. That's because the game scene doesn't have the scene controller component. Let's stop the game to fix this. We'll navigate to the prefabs folder in the project panel. Then we'll drag the scene controller from the hierarchy into this folder. This will create a prefab of the scene controller that we can use in any scene. We'll navigate to the Scenes folder and open the Game Scene. We'll save the main menu scene when prompted. Then we'll go back to the Prefabs folder and drag the Scene Controller into the hierarchy. This is all we need to do to have this scene fade in. We also want this scene to fade out when the player dies. To do this we need to open the Game Manager script. We'll add a serializable field for the scene controller. Then we'll go to the end game method. We'll replace the load scene call with a call to the scene controller. Now when the player dies, it will fade out the scene before loading back in the main menu. Let's save this and switch back to Unity. We'll select the Game Manager in the hierarchy. Then we'll drag the Scene Controller into the field in the Inspector. 
OK, let's press play to try this out. The scene fades in at the start. Now let's take some damage to kill the player. The scene fades out and the main menu fades back in. If we select to play again, the scene fades out and the game scene fades in. In the next video in this series, we'll look at adding some simple obstacle resolution logic to the enemies, so they don't get stuck walking into each other. If you want to be alerted when this one's out, then subscribe and click the bell icon. If you have any questions or feedback on this video, let us know in the comments. A big thank you to all our patrons, we really appreciate you helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Thanks guys!